Ben, this violin is obviously of some historical importance to the LSO. Can you give us a bit of a background as to the history of this instrument? Well, so as far as I know, this um, violin belonged to William Reed, who was one of the leaders of the orchestra um, in its early days. Um, uh, and um, if you look at the back of it, um, it's had basically these are the names of all the, the founding members of the LSO. Wow. Um, been kind of scratched <laughs> in. I mean, it's sort of, when I heard about it, I thought that sort of seems like a rather barbaric thing to do an instrument, but actually yes. they've, they've done it quite... They've done of, it really well. They've it just done it well. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't seem to go very deep in the, in the violin. It's sort of, yeah, exactly. It looks as if it was meant to be like that. Yeah. Um, I gather that there's a sort of, they're not quite sure when this happened, but um, what we do know is that the sort of the idea to ha sort of the idea of, of founding the LSO was hatched possibly on a train to Manchester. Um, and um, it's also sort of possible that, um, I remember reading a theory that they might have actually done it while on the train, although um, then there was also a question as to how they would have managed with the train moving. Um, it's quite, yeah, it so it's neatly. quite so neatly done, yeah, so, actually, so isn't not, it? But, but anyway, that's the, that's the story. It would as, be as a, lovely, a lovely idea of a picture of, of these men <laughs> sitting on the train, <laughs> yes. sort of just scratching Indeed. their names onto the back of a violin. And do you, what do you think it's like to play on something like this from a historical point of view? I mean, as I gather, sort of, it hasn't been played for, for, for quite some time, but I mean, it sounds, it sounds all right. I and mean, we can try the beginning of Sospiri, which is uh, the piece that was, um, uh, was, was dedicated to Billy Reed. Um, I mean, so, you know, with a bit of, um, with yeah, a bit of playing and troika sound, sound. Yeah, So we have no lovely. idea where, what the provenance of the instrument is at all. I understand it's French, and I think beyond that, I don't think we do, no. Okay, um, because it, it does have a, a lovely warm sound, although in a, in a way quite close, but yes, I guess that from might have been with the sort of, yes, point I mean, of view, if you haven't played an instrument for a long time. Exactly, yes. <laughs> so do you, th uh, sort of, how important do you think having something of this sort of a great historical um, piece of art really for the orchestra. What does it, what do you think it really means for the LSO? Well, it's just a sort of a, a kind of nice, a nice connection to the past, a sort of an unusual one, obviously. A, I suppose it's an important primary source um, in terms of just knowing who was actually in the orchestra from the beginning. It is obviously sort of not, you know, some orchestras have very sort of illustrious instruments associated with them. Um, but this is sort of has a rather nice personal kind of touch about it, doesn't it? Amazing piece of history for the orchestra <laughs> mm. to have. And I hope actually all the orchestra will get to have a have a look and actually have a play on this. Yeah, why not? It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's <laughs> great to not even just have a piece of memorabilia from that time, but an actual working instrument yes. makes it, yes. I think, really, really special. So it's uh yeah wonderful object to have. Thank you, Ben, for chatting to us and playing Pleasure. a few notes on it as well. <laughs> My pleasure.